Hey guys, what is up? My name is Alan. Welcome back to the Alan Hines YouTube channel. So in today's video, we're going to be checking out round five of the Virtual Drift Championship. We visit a Manfield Raceway based in New Zealand. Now this circuit is actually a real life track layout used in the real world. d one z hosted their second round of their uh, 2021 championship um, last Saturday, the same date as VDC. However, there are a few differences with the track layout with some differences in clipping points. And so and that's what I'm going to show you guys right now. One of the more interesting things about this track layout is the fact that we have a rolling start beginning. So you leave the start line and you have about a 40 miles per hour or 64 kilometer rolling start zone to the yellow line around the first corner. After this yellow line, the drivers can go full throttle all the way into initiation zone. Now from the initiation into clipping point one, we have a long outer zone all the way around the first corner. Um, but the judges actually asked us to stay beyond this zone. So they asked us to go a bit further beyond the zone to get the correct line into clipping point two. This transition here is super important. If you get too tight, if you leave the first zone too early, you get stuck and put a wheel over the white line where the curb is before clipping point two, and you really cut the chase driver off, which is not what the judges wanted. So it was important as the lead driver to make sure that you were out wide doing what the judges wanted and get into that clipping point two nice, smoothly and flu uh, fluidly. From here, you go into an either clipping point number three, um, fairly self-explanatory, it was just important that you met this clipping point at the point of the clipping point. In other words, don't reach it too early or don't reach it too late. From here, we have to take a midline to the next clipping point in your, of, of clip four. Uh, it was important not uh, not to run too wide here out towards that curb was a big no-no and it really cut the chase driver off after the transition as it really forced the chase driver to be on the inside of the track uh, before this transition which really uh, really did affect how the, the flow of the battle looked. From this clipping point we must now uh, follow all the way out to clipping point 5 which is an outer zone. Super easy to drop a wheel here, I think it was fairly common to do so. Um, and from here we transition into clipping point six. This is probably the most difficult part of the track layout because it's super important to get your transition at the correct point. So that once you get into six, you could accelerate through into seven and across the line. Uh, this diesel zone at number six though was super important and there was quite a few accidents along the way and I will show you our situations that we had to deal with. Of course, we will be driving the Proto Academy S15 in this video and uh, yeah, we had a we had a blast at this round. You know, this car obviously being, um, you know, the championship leader right now, it's obviously at its best. So we're trying to make sure that we do as well in these events to increase our chance of winning the championship. Without further ado, I think we should have a look at our qualifying runs and from there we'll have a look at the battles. So here we go for our qualifying runs. As you can see, left uh, left run on the screen is our first run and the one on the right is our second. As you can see, fairly decent angle here on initiation. Uh, maybe the one on the right a little bit more. Transition through the uh, to clipping point two into three. Um, fairly decent on the middle of the transition here out towards clip five and you see on the right we drop a wheel and to be honest that's probably the biggest difference we kind of run wide in that clipping zone and that's kind of about it uh first run got us a 90 second run got us an 88 so the run on the right got us an 88 um it was kind of interesting actually i felt that maybe the second one was a bit better i felt that it kind of did a little bit more it was better on the line in in general and it was a bit tighter on certain clipping points obviously we dropped the wheel at clipping point five which was super uh, minor in my eyes, I didn't really think we dropped that badly, but the judges thought that was a big enough mistake to drop us quite a few points. And because of that, we ended up qualifying sixth with that 90.7 that we had gotten in the first run. So for our first battle of top 32, we had Adam Gron, who's a Polish drifter from, uh, well, I suppose Poland. I mean, I don't know why I would say Polish drifter from Poland or, you know, New Zealand track from New Zealand. I, I make these mistakes all the time. But Adam, he's a, I believe he's a real life drifter. I don't believe he competes, but he does do, he does have a bit of experience in the real world. Um, and I've known Adam from DCGP, which is another uh, sim based drift championship. And he's a fantastic driver, very good in the lead position carries a ton of angle and so you have to be kind of aware of that going into the battle um, but fortunately in our position we were leading first so we set the pace and of course we're just doing the best lead run we possibly can I think this this is one of my best lead runs I did all day uh, but as you can see Adam was with us all all the way you know we do we gave him enough room on an inner kicking point of, of two uh, out to three into four here um, and you know he's doing a good job he's a bit shallow in places not as smooth maybe or fluid uh, into clipping point six and into seven across the line he's right with us all the way so we, we had to apply the pressure we couldn't give him any space in this situation because if we did um, you know it might not be enough so 
you know, we had a great lead, we gave him all the opportunities possible, and here on the chase positions, because we match angle, we get a little bit closer than him, but he kind of cuts us off badly here going into clipping point two, so it forces me on into this inner line. I wasn't sure if the judges saw that, but I felt like I got cut badly there. And coming across the remainder of the run, we transitioned nicely into clipping point six, and there's a bit of contact. Now, um, you know, we still managed to keep it going, but I think if you look carefully at this point, Adam is actually dropping a wheel uh, into the dirt just before I hit him. And uh, I was actually deselling right after the transition point, so I was deselling way before he was. So, um, yeah, I think the judges had noticed this. Uh, a very minor thing, very hard to see from these replay cameras. I, I really wish that VDC would set the replay cameras in a better positions, maybe up higher so that we can see higher from a different perspective. Further away from the track, a tiny bit would help as well. Uh, sometimes I feel that the camera positions are a little bit too... Uh, they're on the inside of the track, which kind of gives you a false... A perception of what the how deep they are into the zone how much angle they're actually carrying because the car is coming towards you you can't gauge it as well uh, if you're on the outside and you can actually see the edge of the perimeter of the circuit it kind of gives you a better perspective of, of where the car is on the track and i think that's one of those situations the camera just switched at the wrong time or at a, a time that's not ideal and you can't see obviously that he was heading off track however uh you can tell from you know from these shots that uh, i was literally braking from just after the clipping points on full brakes almost and you know i mean i'm in a diesel i'm actually deselling before the diesel so to not hit him so i suppose in that sense uh you know the judges had to put the blame on himself because on, on adam because I, there was nothing more i could really do to stop and i mean it was kind of obvious as well that he was heading off track based off the wheel position uh just before the contact so um yeah, obviously, you know, a very messy battle. That's not the way you kind of want to do it, really, is it? So, uh, of a, look, anyway, we'll take the win. We move on into the top 16. Uh, I felt we probably did it. We did enough in that battle anyway to get the win, regardless of that contact. I felt like we were just cleaner in general. And, um, yeah, I think that was a, was a pretty heart-stopping moment after that contact, wondering was it me at fault or, or was it something else more? Did the judges actually see uh, the mistakes that he was making? So next up, we're up against Andreas uh, Lin. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I can never... <clears throat> anyway, so we're up against Andreas. Andreas and his Mark V Supra. Uh, Andreas has been on the open the last couple of seasons. He's been doing VDC for a long ass time. However, uh, I think in the last season or so, he's really stepped up the pace. And look at this from the get-go. He's right with us all the way to the first outer zone. Uh, we're doing a pretty solid lead run here. Again, lovely transition behind us. Um, could be a little bit closer from Andreas, but pretty decent all the time. Nice scrape on the rear bumper. Uh, our lead run here is pretty sweet. We do a nice transition into the outer zone. Clean up the inner clip in point seven across the line. Easily my best lead run I did all day. I think you can tell from that that would have been mid 90s, hopefully, from, from based off uh, qualifying, if we were able to pull that together. But unfortunately, we couldn't at the time. But uh, as we chase an Andreas here, um, Andreas, great driver, but uh, sometimes can be a little um, aggressive in the lead position and we can kind of see that here transitions snappily but runs wide and allows me to suck up onto him. Uh, I had to back off quite, quite a lot though to make sure I gave myself a bit of room on the transition and he has a bit of a wobble here going into clipping point seven. Um, so I wasn't really able to attack there either and I think that was enough to kind of set the uh, the nail in the coffin as we like to say here in Ireland to, to give us the win and allow us to move on into the top eight. So for the grade eight we were up against Victor Alves. Victor all the way from Brazil. Uh, we've been battling uh, Victor for many many times now. This is our eighth battle together and um, you know what, Battling Victor is fantastic, he's a great driver, uh, easily the best Brazilian drif drifter in my eyes and um, he's come on a long way in the last uh, year or so, he's really stepped up his, uh, his game and so you know Battling Victor you always have to approach it like as if it's a final and so you know in the lead position here we do the best possible leader we possibly can, you know we're right out towards the grass, nearly putting wheel into the grass but he's done a great job chasing us. Um, he does a lovely transition here behind us. Look at that nice lovely transition. Uh, we're out towards the zone He's mimicking us quite well actually He's not really doing the European style of door-to-door -door. Has a bit of a wobble behind us at the rear, but saves it up quite nicely Now heading into this second run from practice I knew Victor was super fast on a straight line and I didn't want to give him any space going in I needed to make sure I was on his bumper to have the mo utmost uh, opportunity so uh, I decided to stay in second gear a little bit longer, but we lack rotation and we drop wheels off into the grass, essentially scoring a zero. And that was it. All Victor had to do was just finish off the run and he ended up getting the win. 
um, you know, like, it's just one of those type of battles, like, you, you know, you have to beat this guy, you've beaten him many times before, and you want to keep that record going, and, uh, you know, you have a better pressure on yourself as well, because Victor is improving all the time, um, so, yeah, of course, we, we pushed a little too hard on initiation behind them, and, of course, we made a minor mistake, uh, a lot of people, I think, actually made mistakes behind Victor in that situation, Victor was super quick in that, that area of the track, and even caught with Tikon as well in the top four, Tikon ended up having a bit of a weird understeer, uh, behind them and which cost him uh, an opportunity going into the finals and Eric has had a, a bit of a crash as well behind him into the wall at top 16 in the same in the same uh, clipping zone uh, so you know obviously with something uh, Victor was doing something really well that there was working for him you know he wasn't doing anything dirty or anything he was just super solid and strong in that area at the initiation point and um, because of that he was gaining a, a nice gap on people or else he was gaining um, you know, just be more consistent in that area in general, which was essentially giving him the win. So, um, yeah, I can't be, you know, too sad about that. I'm obviously I'm mad for making a mistake. You know, I, I want to be beaten fair and square. I don't want to be beaten because I made a mistake personally. Um, and yeah, it's quite, quite, quite common of me to make a mistake in the chase position. So you can imagine how mad I do get. But when you get beaten fair and square, when there's literally no more you can do, you did your best. Um, they're generally the, the battles that I'm quite the happiest to lose to. Uh, obviously, it's quite annoyed with this one, but Victor has it coming for a long time, so he's now got one win. We have seven wins over Victor, so uh, yeah, he's gonna have to beat us another seven or eight times before he can catch up, which is, you know, we have a good, you know, we have a good advantage, advantage over him there. So guys, that's gonna end it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We will be back again on March 7th for round six of the Virtual Drift Championship at Okayama. Uh, really looking forward to that event. I really do like Okayama. You might, you guys might have seen from one of my recent videos that Pro Drifter uh, shows his favorite set of cars or comp tracks or whatever the title was. Uh, that we had a look at that, and uh, Okayama is one of my favorite circuits. Uh, we spent a lot of time recently with that track, um, with 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 our cars on that track as well. So we have a pretty decent amount of data on it, and we seem to do a little bit better on the tracks that we have a bit more time on. Um, so that's going to be kind of interesting for us as well. We also have. Um, Drift Masters Virtual Championship this coming Saturday. Uh, this is going to be the finishing of that postponed event that we had two weeks ago. Unfortunately, the DMVC guys had a failure with the live stream and they decided to postpone the event. So we will be finishing that. A uh, bit of a spoiler, we did qualify first in that with a 96. So a uh, video on that again next week once we finish that event this coming weekend. So guys, that's going to end it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you guys very soon. Cheers and goodbye. <laughs>